It is my pleasure to welcome to the show today Dr. Shaila Hai. Now she is a Dallas-based cardiologist who is known globally as the heart health expert for women. She's a keynote speaker, a frequent media guest, and she is the author of the book, Why Most Women Die. Now, Dr. High is so passionate about sharing information about heart health, general health, wellness, and diet tips for women, so you are in for a real treat today. Dr. High, thank you so much for being on the show. It is such My a pleasure. pleasure to have you here in Key West. Do you I, like it? I am so happy to be here. You've got a beautiful office, let me tell you that. It's gorgeous. It's, it's a beautiful place. Dr. High, before we get into heart health, which is what you are so passionate about, I want to share with our viewers a little bit about your journey because I find it to be very fascinating. Now, you started out as a pharmacist, and then years later, you became a cardiologist. It's interesting how life takes a different twist when we least expect it. I was very happy practicing pharmacy. I enjoy prescribing medications, learning about medications. And then one day, my dad died suddenly of a heart attack without any warning or any symptoms. I was 29, and it was a major life event. And following that, I developed a passion to go to medical school, which led to cardiology because I want to do what I can to keep other families from going through what the Thomases went through. So it did take a different journey, my life did, predominantly because of my dad's premature death. Wow, and you have been so passionate about spreading information mm -hmm. about heart health ever since. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've been all over Dr. High, speaking to so many different people. Yes, my passion has led to keynote speeches, media appearances, one-on-one -on -one with patients in my clinical practice via my book. I'm doing what I can, hopefully, to help people prevent cardiovascular disease. Well, you're doing a great job. And I want to touch on your book first this morning. It's entitled, Why Most Women Die, which is such a catchy title, too. <laughs> but just the very first page, Dr. High, was striking to me. And it says that more than a third of deaths in American women over the age of 20 are caused by heart disease. That's frightening. It's a bold title, and mm -hmm. it's bold for a reason. Mm -hmm. Most people, especially women, don't realize that since 1984, more women die from heart attacks and strokes than men. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at the pure numbers. 432,000 women die each year from either a heart attack or stroke. Now, putting that in perspective, that is five times that of breast cancer. And what's even more surprising to women is that cardiovascular disease claims more lives than all forms of cancer combined. That's frightening. What's even more frightening <laughs> is we're facing a crisis. Mm -hmm. There are 50 million women over the age of 50. And as the baby boomers get older, we are really facing a problem with respect to cardiovascular disease if we don't do something about it. So Dr. High, with all of that being said, what can we start doing right now to prevent this from happening to us? Some news that you can use is that 75% of cardiovascular disease is preventable. And the majority of those preventive measures are lifestyle measures, such as uh, exercise, eating healthy, maintaining an ideal body weight, stop smoking, and then treat those diseases that promote heart disease such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, and diabetes. So we have seven ways of approach so that we can prevent from ever developing the disease in the first place. Diet has to be one of the biggest weapons in this fight. As you mentioned, it's one of the seven. Tell us a little bit more about diet. Like what are some things that we should maybe add to our diet each day or shouldn't add to our diet? Hippocrates said 2,000 years ago that food should be your medicine and the best medicine is food. Mm -hmm. And recent data has shown some really strong evidence for blueberries. Mm -hmm. For instance, they looked from Harvard at 93,000 women from between age of 25 and 45 and followed them for 18 years. And when they ate blueberries or strawberries at least three times a week, they had a 32% reduction in heart attacks. Now that is good news. So eating blueberries three times a week, it can reduce your risk 
of heart disease. That data is equal that of a statin drug. Wow, wow. Okay, so that's something we can add to our diet. Tell me something that we need to take away immediately from our diet. We encourage patients to reduce the saturated fats. Uh, we encourage more antioxidants. One thing that might surprise you that's healthy is dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. A little bit of dark chocolate actually has more flavonoids than beans and green tea. Avocados are little gems of health. Mm -hmm. And so many things that we perceive as maybe not being so healthy actually are. I like that, dark mm -hmm. chocolate. Add that to our diet Absolutely. every day. That's a good thing to add. It. <laughs> okay, so blueberries, dark chocolate, avocados, mm -hmm. these are all healthy foods, they're good foods too, so that can't be hard to add. I encourage my patients to make just good choices mm -hmm. when they go to the grocery store and also limit portions. Mm -hmm. And as you know, there are tons of diets out there that kind of come in and out of vogue, mm -hmm. but most of them focus on fish, poultry, low-fat dairy, wheat grains, some nuts, olive oil, try to avoid red meat as much as possible mm -hmm. and limit the processed foods. And overall, when you combine those things, you're going to find yourself a lot healthier. Great. And now I know another weapon has to be being active and exercise. So we're going to take a quick break right now. But when we get back from these messages, Dr. High, please let us know how we can live a more physically active life. Let's do it. I'm spending some time talking with Dr. Shyla High. She is known globally as the Heart Health Doctor for Women. Dr. High, before we went to break, I wanted you to talk with us this morning about how we can become more physically active in our life. Exercise has at least 10 or 15 good things about it. It improves your energy, reduces depression, it strengthens your bones, it helps to prevent um, high blood pressure and diabetes. And for some reason, we are a very sedentary population. As a matter of fact, 50% of women over 50 are sedentary. The most common recommendation is a 30-minute walk at least five times a week. Mm -hmm. Now, the data from that comes from the fact that if you exercise 30 minutes, five days a week, you live 10 years longer. Really? By choosing to move, you lengthen your life. Just by walking? Just by walking. Wow, just five times a week. Five times a and week. And you can lengthen your lifespan by 10 years. Who would turn that down? <laughs> no one, right? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so walking in our life. Now, Dr. High, we were talking earlier before the show about how we should maybe change the name from workout to something different. Because when you say to someone, I need to work out, I need to go to the gym, do a workout, works involved in that. I know, so we need to come up with a different it, word. <laughs> I like to think it is, I'm just going to go get fit, uh -huh. and I'm going to do something to lengthen my life. Uh -huh. And what I find, it's not that people don't exercise because they can't, it's for the most part, it's just because they don't like to. Uh -huh. So I take the time and say, okay, what do you like to do? And if they're social, I encourage them to get a partner to walk with. It kind of keeps them accountable. Mm -hmm. If they're more private, then sometimes they want to have home equipment, such as a treadmill. Mm -hmm. I find that we don't have to talk ourselves into doing things we like. Mm -hmm. So I spend some time talking about what do you like to do. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a morning person, don't try to work out or walk in the morning. Do it maybe later in the day. Exactly. And a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. For every hour of moderate activity, you gain six hours of life. Wow. So that's easy. Mm -hmm. So that's something we can do along with changing our diet a little bit. Just add some walking into our routine. And right there, that can decrease our chances of heart disease. And some other simple things. Park a long distance away from where you're going to be shopping. Mm -hmm. Try to take the stairs. Uh, when you can, maybe move the remote across the room, just staying fit. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, we can't have the bodies we want if we're sitting on the bodies we've got. Absolutely. And instead of taking the elevator, maybe take, take the stairs. Step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple things make a big difference. Absolutely. Now, Dr. High, let's talk about the role that stress plays in heart disease. Stress is very complex. Most people know that a sudden outburst 
or a sudden event can trigger a heart attack or a stroke up to two hours after the acute event. But stress also plays a little sneakier role. For instance, if we are in a stressful situation or a stressful time of life, we tend to continue to smoke, we stop off at fast food, we tend to get less sleep, and all of those things are deleterious with respect to our risk of developing heart disease and subsequently a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Women that have a stressful job have a 46% increased risk of a heart attack. So stress does play a role. There is a condition called the broken heart syndrome and when someone has an acute event it can actually sometimes damage the heart and many times it can get better but stress is not a benign condition. Dr. High, we're going to talk more about the role that stress can play in our lives after these messages, so please stay with us because there is much more to come this morning with Dr. Shyla. We're focusing on heart health this morning with Dr. Shyla High. Dr. High, before we went to break, we were talking about the role that stress plays mm -hmm. in our lives. Let's talk about some things that we can incorporate into our lives that can make a positive difference. Something like smiling mm -hmm. makes a difference. They looked at people who were in a stressful situation, and even if they smiled and they didn't necessarily feel happier, it decreased the impact of the stress. An optimistic attitude. People that generally are optimistic have a 35% reduction in heart disease. Who knew? Really? Listening to music 30 minutes a day relaxes those blood vessels and also is protective. Mm -hmm. And then this is really interesting. People that are attentive to others mm -hmm. have less heart disease. Turn that around. The more people use I, me, my, that increases their risk of heart disease. Very fascinating data. Wow. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that smiling could decrease your risk? Being positive could decrease your risk. Listen to tunes. Listening to music and listening to others instead of focusing on yourself. It, they're really simple things that don't require prescriptions, mm -hmm. don't require a visit to the doctor, and there are things that we just don't think about. Mm -hmm. But can really make a difference, you it bet. sounds like. Mm -hmm. All right, now we know that heart disease is more leading in women than men. We touched on that earlier. What are some other differences between women and men, Dr. Hyde? I find that women are surprised to realize that every aspect of this disease is different from the impact of risk factors the symptoms the testing the diagnosis the prognosis more women die within one year of a heart attack than men do and the other startling fact is that 35 percent of heart attack deaths in women occur in women under 55 so every part of this disease is different, which probably explains why more women than men die, even in recent data. Mm -hmm. What about symptoms, Dr. High? I get asked that a lot because not all heart symptoms are in the chest, mm -hmm. and not all chest pain is related to the heart. And women have a higher incidence of some very vague symptoms, such as a new onset shortness of breath, new onset fatigue, sometimes just abdominal pain. I have a patient, her only symptom was jaw pain, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So I tell my patients, be attuned to any change in your body. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like there's something that you can't do now because of whatever symptom that you could do a few months ago, that's the time you need to have it checked out. Dr. High, you've been speaking, as we've mentioned, all over to so many women. You've had the opportunity to talk with them about heart disease. What would you say are the top misconceptions that women have? I think women are more afraid of breast cancer when that is really not the number one killer. Mm -hmm. I think women don't realize it does affect us in our very young, productive years. It claims lives of young women. I think women don't realize it's harder for them to stop smoking than men mm -hmm. because women have more of a hand-to-mouth addiction whereas men have more of the actual nicotine addiction. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that women sometimes feel like it's just going to happen and they can't do anything about it. 
and I emphasize over and over that you could have a significant impact with very small, simple lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. And you've touched on a lot of those lifestyle changes this morning, and you touch on so many of those changes in your book, which again is titled, entitled Why Most Women Die. Dr. High, when we get back from these messages, I want you to talk with us a little bit more about how your book evolved. Sure, I'd love to. We've been talking heart health all morning with Dr. Shyla High. Dr. High is the author of this book entitled Why Most Women Die. Dr. High, I have to say that I have really enjoyed reading this book. You have so much information in here, so much information that can really change our lives. Thank you. It, the book really stemmed from some frustration when I realized that even in the new millennium, even knowing what we know, there is still a huge education gap and a huge gap in information. And a lot of women don't have a source, a place they can go to say, how do women differ from men? What can we do about it? And I want to make a difference. As you know, I am really passionate about getting the word out. And the book is one way for me to say, okay, let's start here so that you can make some healthy changes. Right. It really does make such a difference, and anybody can pick up their copy on Amazon.com. Dr. High, what can our viewers do right now, those who are watching the show, to summarize everything you've said this morning? What can we start doing today? To put a bow around it, I would start off making some simple changes as far as exercise and choosing healthy foods to prolong your life based on the current data we have. And the other thing is to listen to your body for any symptoms that might be worrisome and to take action when those symptoms develop. Mm -hmm. Because the good news is that we can make a difference. Because if we don't, we're facing a huge crisis in our country. Absolutely, we really are. It's alarming, again, mm -hmm. your numbers, your statistics. And I like, Dr. I, I have to touch on again how the fact you said we add blueberries to our diet, we add dark chocolate to our diet, we walk for 30 minutes. Those are such easy, simple things. They're simple things that we can incorporate, and not only can we live healthier lives now, but we can live healthier lives for a lot longer. That's wonderful. Wonderful news then, Dr. High. It has been such a pleasure to talk Thank with you, you so this much. morning. Thank you so much for being on the show. I've enjoyed it. And be sure to pick up your copy of Dr. High's book, Why Most Women Die. That's going to do it for me this morning. You can check out more on Dr. High by going to the website you see on the bottom of the screen.